How would you define a passport, bro? You've been the OG in this game. You're a world traveler. Not as a passport, bro, but you've yeah, lived yeah. all over the world. You were born in the UK. You lived in Saudi. You've spent a lot of time in the States. Mm -hmm. I'm sure I'm leaving out a ton of countries that you spent time in. Yeah, yeah. How would you define this concept of a passport, bro? Yeah, sure. So I, firstly, I think it's interesting that um, this is something that explicitly has a name now. I think, right. the, I think the sort of passport bro terminology popped up maybe around 2020, 2021. Mm -hmm. it's During something COVID, that, everyone was kind of uh, yeah, out there, it, work it's, from anywhere. It's a phenomenon that has existed for many, many decades before anyone ever gave it a name. But specifically, it refers to men who obviously have passports because you need them to travel internationally, yep. but who travel internationally um, and date or have relationships with women in different countries. I think with the way the term's normally used, it's normally implying, and this is where the stigma comes, that that's specifically why they're traveling, okay. whereas I think it's actually a little bit more holistic than that. We've just got people who enjoy traveling around, and they may or may not date people um, as they're doing it. Right. So no, I'm with you. As someone that's traveled all over the world, yeah. I've been to Australia, I've been to Israel, I've been all over South America, country, country, country. I was just going to travel. Yeah, and yeah. I think part of the, if you go deeper on it, you know, with the rise of um, modern feminism, you would say, um, especially some of the stuff that is covered on a lot of men's podcasts, a lot of men are sort of tired of uh, women of the West, specifically American women, Canadian women, um, the entitlement mentality, the delusional moniker that kind of gets thrown out there. So there is a deeper level, and it did even go deeper during COVID. I full agreement with you. We've been traveling for forever now. People have been traveling for but many reasons for the, a long but time. But what has changed in the last, let's say, decade is, you know, uh, the future is female vibe, the toxic masculinity vibe, these, these terms that get thrown out there uh, sort of belittling women and empowering mm. men. And there's nothing wrong with women being empowered, but ultimately I say at what expense is there? So uh, Fit, Fit X, you live in? Colombia. In Colombia. Yeah. What made you move to Colombia? I just love travel. And, you know, that was one of the places I visited when I started traveling out of college. And I just loved it. Um, so, yeah, I picked there to stay for right now. And in terms of the passport bro thing, I think, alluding to what you said, I think a lot of guys are just tired of being, feeling unappreciated in the United States. So they're looking for respect and love elsewhere. Because I think what feminism has done is made men um, not inclined to provide as much. So it's okay, if I'm not appreciated in the U.S., I go provide for a woman elsewhere. So I think that's, that's how the passport bros you know, so you're, you're saying that it's specifically the provider mentality, whereas men, they've tra traditionally been the provider, the protector. Yeah. But as women have been uh, enabled to make more money and don't need a man as mm -hmm. much anymore, um, the provider for especially the average man out there, the working man out there, the construction worker out there, the teacher out there, yeah, it doesn't earn as much as maybe even some women out there. So they might not be as much needed as they were in prior generations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I think I think a lot of guys, it's kind of a two-way thing. I, I support it, but then I don't like the guys who do it trying to escape the responsibility. Okay. So I think some guys, they don't want to put in the work to evolve and become a better man. So they try to escape to another country. So they take the easy route out. Right. But there are guys who are on this stuff, like who, who are working on themselves and want to just explore. And I, I commend those guys. Yeah. I just don't think you should do it because you want to escape. Right? Okay. Mm -hmm. and, and well, you actually had a viral clip. Malik, I think you have that ready to go. Sort of explaining exactly this. It might, might have been on my friend's uh, Fresh and Fit podcast. Yeah. I'm not sure exactly. But you were basically saying this, because there's going to be a theme of this show about men having purpose, uh, fulfilling um, a, a higher level of achievement, being useful. So that will be a theme. And obviously, we're going to get the ladies' perspective throughout the show. Uh, so ladies, we'll, we'll be with you. <laughs> Let's play this clip, um, and then we'll open up this com conversation with the ladies. Don't do the work and they come to Columbia okay. mm. expecting the women to just bow down for them. I do say it's a more feminine culture. Like, you don't have to fight the women to be women. 
opposed okay. to here. Okay. Like, I feel like in America, it's more of like a, even though I like this guy, even though he's the guy I want to be with, let me play difficult. I feel like that's not so much there. But if you come to Colombia and you're not in good shape, you don't dress well, you just think girls are just going to like you for you, then they have every right to finesse you. Facts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You can find good girls anywhere, bro. It's just there, I believe, there's more feminine essence gotcha. right, right. that you don't have to fight for. Gotcha. A lot of guys, they don't do... Okay, so Zuby, let me go back to you and then I'll open sure. it up to the women. Um, go to the, like the most basic level of men looking for a wife. We're past just travel and just see, seeing other cultures. Why do you think the passport bros, this, this terminology, are actually going to other countries yeah. to find more traditional, compliant, subservient women? Yeah, um, I wouldn't even use the terms compliant and subservient. Um, I think really what it is, is it's essentially globalism applied to the dating and relationship market, right? So it's much easier for people to travel now than it has ever been in human history. It's a lot cheaper, more affordable. People are more worldly because people are connected online and you can see all these opportunities and see what other people are doing. So I think, um, I mean, it really FedEx has, has nailed it. If depending on the type of man you are, um, you are going to find a greater percentage of certain types of women in different places. This is true at a state level, a city level, uh, an international level, and so on. So if you are someone who's got more of a traditionalist or even conservative mindset, there are still, by the way, in the USA, there are still millions and millions of women who are like that um, in any big city, let alone in places that are smaller. But the truth is, Feminism, not even the weird sort of third, fourth wave type of feminism has heavily, heavily infected the USA and every modern Western country, especially in the Anglosphere. I'm talking about Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the UK, um, USA. So if you are someone who's not a fan of that mm -hmm. and who prefers more traditional relationship dynamics where you can play more of a traditionally masculine man and the woman is happy taking a more of a traditionally feminine role and you both appreciate that and it's a two-way street then there are many places it's it's basically like the, the cat's kind of out the bag now yeah. that there are many many places in the world in fact the vast majority of countries in the world um the women are more traditionally feminine than they are in all these anglo countries mm -hmm. so if that is what you're looking for you're more likely to find that elsewhere this doesn't mean that if you're a complete dork and a loser in your home country, you're going to magically fly out somewhere else and you're, you're going to be the man. Right. Um, I think some people have that kind of By the way, bingo, this is the answer I was looking for. You that? said feminism has infected the Anglo-Saxon countries of the world. Yeah, United it's in States, the water. Canada, man, yeah. Australia, um, certain Scandinavian countries. Sure. And if you're looking for a traditional relationship dynamic, you might find it in other countries. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, ladies, you're hearing this conversation go on, okay? feminism, infecting certain countries, um, traditional relationships. Uh, you're from Colombia, or your family's from Colombia, but you lived in the States, right, Stephanie? Yeah. Do you notice an actual difference between the relationship dynamics in the States versus Colombia, what the role of a man, the role of a woman, uh, protector, provider, especially on the financial aspect? What have you noticed? Um, I feel like in Colombia, it's true. Women are more feminine and they look for a man to provide for them rather than here. A lot of women tend to be like, oh, like I don't need a man to do anything for me. So I feel like he's, he's right. So if you like that clip, click right here to watch another, or if you want to watch the entire SauceCast, click right here.